talking about enthalpy. Enthalpy. I have a H in there. Enthalpy. Okay, so we needed to remember what exothermic reactions and endothermic reaction means. I say that in an exothermic reaction, we have more energy in a reactant side than we have in the products, meaning that our delta H is negative. In our endothermic reaction, however, we have more energy in our products than we have in our reactant. So our delta H is positive. So this is related with the released or absorbed energy. Absorbed energy, released energy. So this is the first thing we need to know about enthalpy. Now, uh, usually questions in Chem 101 ask us to uh, calculate some heat released or heat absorbed uh, in a specific reaction. So I have one example here where I have carbon and oxygen combining, making CO2 gas. And this reaction, it's um, exothermic, negative 393.1 kilojoules per mole. Point five. One, negative one, nine, oh, three, nine, three point five kilojoules per moles. So the first question is how many kilojoules of heat are released if three moles of carbon react? So let's uh, see how can we set up that. So I know that here I have one mole. So three moles of um, carbon, how much on energy? For one mole, of carbon that we have here, we actually released 393.5 kilojoules. So I just do 3 times 393 and I got 1180.5 kilojoules are released with 3 moles of carbon reacting. The next question says if I have 204.5 kilojoules of heat uh, released, how many grams of CO2 were produced? This is a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's not bad. So now we have the amount of energy and we want to work like backwards. We have energy. On this problem we had the moles. We just want to know how much on kilojoules, how much heat. This problem here we have the heat and want to know how much, how many grams. So I would say 104.5 kilojoules. And then I look at it in my table for every, or in my, in my reaction, for every one mole of CO2, I have 393.5 kilojoules being released. So I wanted a 393.5 kilojoules in the bottom because they can cancel out for every one mole of CO2. Now, the question asks me, how many grams will be produced of CO2. If I stop my calculation here, I know that this gives me the moles of CO2. If I want to convert moles to grams, I need one more step where moles goes in the bottom and grams of CO2 goes in the top. And actually, the grams of CO2 is the molar mass of CO2. 
I have it right down here, 44.0095. So if I do 204 times 5 times 1 times 44.0095 divided by 393.5 times 1, this gives me the answer. Miles and miles here will cancel, and I will end it in grams. It's my final answer. In this particular case will be 2287 grams of CO2. So for problems related with uh, heat, I need to have my equation. My equation needs to be balanced, and then I look at the problem. The problem can ask me how much heat is released or absorbed, and I use the relationship between the balance equation and the delta H, like I did in this case here. Or the question can give me the energy and ask me how much grams or moles, and I see you're going to use the same relationship between um, my reaction, my balanced equation, and my delta H, and I could go a step farther or not, just depending on what type of question I'm dealing with.